Hey Data Factory fans, welcome back to the channel. It's Mark with you and today I'd like to introduce you to a new change data capture feature that we've just released as public preview. So when you go into your factory now and you can look at the screen and see mine, um, I have a change data capture resource and you should see this in your factory too. Notice that it is preview. So at the time of this recording, this feature is public preview, which means it is fully supported, but it does give us you know, some leeway to make some changes between now and when it's generally available. That being said, we've had change data capture features and capabilities within Data Factory for some time. And if you look at this example data flow that I have on my screen, I'm, I'm selected, uh, I have the source transformation selected. And under source options, you just check a box uh, to turn on change data capture today. So in this case, I could simply enable change data capture here on my blob, uh, blob store source. And that would start giving me the changes every time it ran. And Data Factory fully maintains the checkpoint watermark. Uh, you can, uh, reset the checkpoint if you want to reread from the beginning. We have lots of capabilities around um, what you want to do with your change data capture, you know, a run an incremental or a full on the first run and then incremental. But what we've done is to raise this capability up to a top level factory resource. And that's why it's here in factory resources right next to pipelines. What this means is that you can now really quickly and easily configure a change data capture from a set of click through screens without needing to design a data flow or even a pipeline. Activities like pipelines or even Power Query activities to run those require a pipeline, but not change data capture. Change data capture you can run on its own, and all you have to do is just start it. You don't need to set a trigger, you just set a latency, and it continuously runs, and Data Factory maintains the checkpoints and the watermark for you automatically. All right, that's probably enough setup. Let's go ahead and dive into a demo. And you, as you'll see, the demo will be quick because to configure a CDC uh, process, we uh, deliberately design this in a way that makes it very quick. You don't need to design graphs or learn triggers or anything like that. You just tell us where your data is, what you want to do with it. So you're going to click plus to create a new change data capture. And the first thing you're going to see is a, is a fly in and you're going to pick your source. So for, for this demo, I'm going to pick a delimited text source. These are all the sources that are supported today. We'll be adding more uh, throughout the preview and it's only going to be sources that will allow us to, uh, uh, implement CDC. So for example, SQL Server and PostgreSQL uh, storage will be adding other connectors along those lines. And if you go into a data flow today and select change data capture, you can see all of the uh, connectors that support CDC already. And we'll be bringing those in here to the change data capture resource. So I need my link service so I know how to connect or so ADF knows how to connect to that source. And I'm going to pick the folder that I want to read from. Now I have a folder here under my uh, demo folder that is called CDC, so I can put files in there. You can preview the data, and it's my movies data, so that's perfect. And just click on continue. You get another fly in. This time, what do you want to call your mapping? Let's call this um, a demo for CDC. And then what do you want to do with your data? Where do you want to put it? Uh, let's put it into a SQL database. A uh, really common destination for uh, the early CDC uh, customers has been Delta. We support Delta, we also support uh, Parquet. In this case, I'm going to use SQL because that would be also a very common destination for your data. And I have a SQL database here in this link service. Now what's going to happen is it's going to, um, uh, ADF will go ahead and query all of the uh, tables that you have in your target database and just pick where you want that uh, to go. Or you could say, give me a new table and create a new table uh, from this process. I'm not going to create a new table. I'm going to load an existing movies uh, database table that I have already. So I will say movies. And so when you're done, you're then dropped into the uh, primary screen for your CDC resource. And what you see is that I have that mapping that I defined through the flying panels, which is from my demo CDC folder to my dbo.movies database. You can have multiple sources and targets. So you can come down here and you can add to that here. Um, you can add more sources and you can add more targets. But for this demo, I'll just uh, map one to one. So I'm going to uh, map these, uh, the source table, which is essentially files to the target table. Now notice that the columns were already mapped for me. So we have a, a heuristic that provides fuzzy matching on the um, columns for you, but you can click here and you can define the mappings yourself for the, so on the column mapping screen, you see that a data factory automatically map these columns for me from my source to my target. And these were exact matches. So that was a little bit easy, but if they're, if they're similar, they'll also match for you. And if you don't, if you didn't intend to match that, you can just remove the mapping yourself here from the screen. But you'll see that these are listed as direct, which means that whatever is in the genre column, the source is going to go into the genre column in the targets. You can see a data preview down here. 
And you can also then pick, if you like, you can also look at um, the drop down for the mapping method and you can pick transformation. So you see things like trim up or lower. A uh, genre is a string. So let's go ahead and trim that. And then for numeric columns, you'll see a set of aggregations. Or you can also pick the advanced option and you'll be able to enter in the expression language that we have for data transformations if you want to get to that detail of transforming your data. All fully supported in the CDC object. I'm going to put this back to direct mapping. We'll just do the one transformation. And that is it. So we can go back now to the primary screen. And all we have to do now is just set our latency. So you don't set a trigger or create a pipeline, just set latency. Now, the frequencies available to you today are 15 minutes to two hours. But you also see less than one minute, which is coming very soon, and then real time, which will land a little bit later in public preview. So right now we're in the micro batch uh, sort of category. We'll enable real time uh, very soon. But in the meantime, I'm going to set it for 15 minutes. Once the less than one minute lights up, which will be very soon, when you select that, um, the CDC process will essentially be continuously running and looking for changes on your sources. And because you only get billed for the CDC process and not for the pipeline, it's a very economical way to achieve that uh, that goal. So that's it. Let's apply that. Now you do have to publish when you're done because we need to build a set of processes to run your CDC. I do want to point out a couple of uh, notes here that will show up up here in the banner. One is that this is public preview. Um, and also that notice it says the mapping is not running because once we publish, we have to click the start button. And this is how you start it running. Now, once it's running, you'll see that you can click here to monitor the mapping. So there's a new section in monitoring for CDC mappings and that you will be billed for four cores of general purpose data flow. Uh, that is the only uh, bill that you'll see for running your CDC process. Let's go ahead and monitor the mapping. And the orientation is a little different. So you see there's change data capture here. Let me actually click on this to show you the category. Um, and I can show you another CDC process that I had running. Uh, this was uh, CDC8, we'll pick, because this one was running already. So every occurrence that happens, this one is in 15 minute increments, you will see a, um, a dot on here and you can click on it and you can see what happened. I had no rows or no data change at that point, but here I had a bunch of rows. If I click on it, you'll see I had nine, uh, 9,125 rows were read from my source and that succeeded and took seven seconds to process it. So the monitoring for CDC is very oriented toward your data as opposed to a process like a pipeline is. And the number of rows read and written will come up for you up here. So that should be enough to, to help you get started uh, building your CDC um, processes within Data Factory. I'm uh, very excited to, uh, to have you try it and give us your feedback. And uh, we'll be recording some new videos throughout the, uh, the preview time period for Change Data Capture. And thank you so much for watching.